Gallimera, Gallimera, Gallimera. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And what a mixed bag of a day for weather we have got at the moment. If I look forward in the front of the house, looking up towards the direction of Silla V, uh, we've got some cloud, we've got some blue sky as well. And uh, if we turn and look towards the hills, going towards Amber Lockerbie and uh, um, Kerry, guess what? It is not looking good whatsoever. The weather, to be honest, has been really weird uh, these last, uh, well, shall we say this last 24 hours. Yesterday, uh, Jane and I, we sat on the balcony and we were watching uh, the funeral of His Royal Highness Prince Philip and it was absolutely glorious. It was beautiful weather, absolutely lovely. And the, re the weird thing was at uh, part of the service uh, where the Royal Marines uh, took the coffin from the back of the Land Rover hearse and then started to uh, march up the stairs into St George's Chapel, halfway up the stairs they stop and they wait there then for the uh, uh, one minute silence. It was really strange. At that point that those Royal Marines marched up the, um, up the stairs, all the bells rang out um, from the Iron Mavra Church, which is right the way at the top of the hill. And it was kind of poignant, actually. I was thinking, I don't know if that was planned. I've never noticed the bells go off at that time before in the past, but they just rang out at that, uh, at that very moving moment in the service. But the weather was absolutely glorious yesterday. And then as soon as the, the funeral was over and it started, to, to obviously, uh, it, it finished, um, guess what? The weather just changed really weirdly. And we had like this feeling of a storm coming, but the storm not quite arriving. So again, the weather today is, uh, again, very unsettled. Uh, looking across towards uh, Kalamaki and also down towards Lagana. Um, hello, fella. Uh, looking down towards Lagana. Again, it's looking very unsettled, not looking nice at all, uh, and looking very grim. So again, at the moment, uh, God knows uh, what the weather's going to bring in for us today, but we shall see if it brightens up. I'll be interested to see what Amanda's weather forecast is going to be like for today and see what has, uh, has she got any ideas on what's going on. Anyway, once again, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, uh, I think today's broadcast is going to be a rather quick one. It's a Sunday. And um, I've also had some further news as well, which has been really good. Um, YouTube has been in touch again just to give me my stats for the month. And can I just say thank you to everybody that is supporting the uh, YouTube channel uh, going on and watching the broadcast there. I know a lot of people like to watch it live and get involved. And there's other people because of their work and their jobs. Uh, they watch me on catch up. Um, but anyway, at the moment, uh, YouTube got in touch with me yesterday and said, uh, Ginge, uh, you've had 18 new subscribers, which is not bad. Uh, you've also had um, 3,235 total views so far uh, for this month. And uh, over 15,000 minutes of your content has uh, also been watched as well. So I'm really chuffed about that. I really am. So anyway, uh, thank you to all those people. And once again, if you haven't liked and subscribed to my YouTube channel, the reason I keep it going is because it's just a great archive. Uh, I can stick all my broadcasts in there and uh, they're all in there. They're all so tagged up as well. So there's anything that you want to cross reference or check. And for me as well, I'm always going back and having to look for stuff that I may have spoken about earlier. Have a little read, have a little look. And then obviously it prepares me for my next broadcast. So once again, thanks for that. Uh, I've also had a message now from the lovely Amanda Gregory. She says, good morning, Ginge. Uh, sunshine with a little cloud today, a little cloud, okay, uh, a high of 19 degrees, feels like 23, thought we were in for a storm last night, you're not the only one who thought we were in for a storm last night, uh, because of the colours of the sky, uh, have a good day, yeah, you're right there, I really did think we were in for a real knockout storm last night, but for some reason it didn't come and I'm quite pleased about that, alright, anyway, uh, let's have a look, oh yeah, by the way, can I just say, um, Thank you to Sky News. I thought your coverage yesterday of His Royal Highness uh, Prince of Wales' funeral was absolutely fantastic. 
Tried to watch it on the BBC at first, but having lots of buffering problems, uh, went to Sky. And to be honest, I was really, really impressed with the people that you had, the respect and dignity that you did the broadcast with, and also uh, the poignance of some of the people that you interviewed. Um, it was really done in a really great, respectful manner. I think the Queen probably, if anything, if she was going to watch the funeral afterwards, I would watch it on Sky, fella. All right, <laughs> Mom, uh, because I think they did a sterling job. And actually, somebody said Hugh, Hugh Edwards was first class. I didn't manage to see Hugh do his stuff, but I must admit I thought Sky did a really, really good job. And uh, I thought the parade itself was fantastic. The weather was glorious, and I thought it was a nice day for a funeral especially when you're thinking the guy was 99 years of age it should be a celebration of life and his no nonsense uh, approach in some respects as well was lovely to see and also the little personal touches as well but um, it was a legend of a day uh, for a man who was a legend and I felt sorry for the Queen actually that she played the game uh, where other people like ex-IRA IRA men's funerals and also gypsy funerals where people were breaking all the rules um, the Queen still had the dignity to conform to what the ordinary man in the street was supposed to be doing at the time of a funeral and I thought that was a credit and it was interesting to see as well that Boris Johnson actually gave up his seat uh, so that he was not one of the 30 that were allowed to attend the funeral um, and basically let somebody else attend as well so I think Boris uh, you probably did a good move there probably the best move you've done so far in basically just staying away um, and again I just thought everything that was done and a big shout out to the Garrison Sergeant Major who had to pull all that together in in the time that he had I think absolute cracking job cracking effort and a fantastic reflection on Britain as well anyway let's crack on with the news let's look at what's been happening in the way of COVID here in the last 24 hours uh, in uh, Greece at the moment things are going down which is a really good thing to see new infections were down yesterday uh, we had 2411 new infection as opposed to 3067 on the day before that means our grand total of infections since the pandemic started has been 313,444, of which 51% uh, of those were male. Also, cases identified at ports of entry into Greece, that was down as well. We had 13 reported the other day, and yesterday there were seven new cases reported at entries into the country. Now, when it comes to uh, the national statistics as to infection at the moment, uh, Lefkada had three new cases, uh, Kefalonia had five new cases, um, Corfu had one new case, and uh, Zakynthos had three new cases reported on the national stats. However, when I was checking the local stats, uh, the local stats said this, uh, the, news, the new cases of the day were announced tonight and we were glad to hear that it was only two cases reported on Zakynthos. Uh, two were from a PCR and uh, one was from a rapid test. Um, sorry, one was a PCR test, one was a rapid test, only two cases. However, still at the moment in the hospital, there are four people in incubation at the moment in the COVID clinic and uh, there are nine people in the COVID ward. Uh, so at the moment, fingers crossed that those people in the COVID ICU are going to pull through and they're going to be OK. But at the moment, uh, we still have four people in incubation and nine people in the COVID clinic in the hospital here on Zakynthos. Um, when it comes to deaths, um, yesterday then, deaths across Greece, there were, uh, that was down from the day before where we had 91 deaths on the day before. And the day before that, we'd had 107. <laughs> Yeah, there goes the cockerel. Uh, <laughs> um, new deaths yesterday on in Greece was 67. So that was a drop as well in deaths. Uh, again, the average age of those people uh, were around about 79. There's been a total uh, since the pandemic started of 9,397 deaths total. And 96% uh, of those people that have passed away uh, were over the ages of 70. So there you go. The death rate is now starting to come down as well. Um, when it comes to incubations, unfortunately, the incubations are up. Uh, they were 824 people incubated across the, uh, Greece. 
Uh, now the number is at 837 uh, people in critical states across uh, Greece. 507 of those are male and 317 of those are female. It seems to be female cases have just uh, crept up at the moment. Uh, and also there is a benchmark, uh, a, a ceiling of 900 uh, is what uh, the Greek NHS can cope with. So again, the numbers are um, not quite getting there, but just creeping slowly towards the 900 level. But again, we'll wait and see uh, how that plays out. But anyway, so uh, critical cases, unfortunately, are up. Right, uh, today's news then. Uh, it seems that the head of the Thessaloniki Prosecutor's Office has asked the police to file charges against internet users who upload posts calling on the public to refuse the test, uh, refusing to test for COVID-19. Uh, the order came in the wake of the uh, controversy at a high school in Western Thessaloniki where students were refused entry after turning up without certification that they had proven they had undergoing mandatory self-testing. Don't forget self-testing for kids wanting to go to school. They have to self-test twice a week. Also, don't forget as of Monday tomorrow, uh, people working in the retail sector here or working with the public, uh, they have to now start self-testing and uh, it's going to be on the owners of businesses if those employee staff that you have haven't self-tested uh, you're liable to a 3,000 euro fine for allowing workers in your place untested and of course uh, people who lie on their self-certifications you're liable for a 300 uh, euro fine as well uh, for either not filling in the form or filling in the form incorrectly now how they're going to impose this we all all yet to see are they going to have people come in and doing spot random checks of workers but it is a slippery slope and uh, we will see uh, what will transpire with this but anyway that all kicks off tomorrow here across greece um also again a report released uh, yesterday by the french news agency confirmed that three million people have died worldwide so far from covid uh, nine from the covid 19 pandemic now the uk has seen the greatest death toll in europe uh, with 127,225 succumbing to the virus worldwide the us has recorded the highest national death toll uh, which stands at the moment at 566,224 now the reported deaths in the UK have been falling recent in recent weeks uh, they say in the article it's results from the country's successful vaccination program now in the US they're saying uh, the numbers of deaths are now starting to level off uh, some states are once again experiencing an increase However, when you look at Brazil and India uh, at present, they are reporting the worst increases in deaths. Now, you've got to put this in context. Uh, Three million deaths uh, since the start of the COVID pandemic uh, last year. When you compare that to the um, estimated figures from the World Health Organization in reference to the Spanish flu epidemic, uh, ap epidemic of uh, 1918 to uh, 1920 uh, they have actually put the, the figures of deaths at around about 50 million and that worked out at the time about three percent of the global pop, pop population and there's also talk that maybe uh, the uh, pandemic for the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic uh, could actually even run as high as 100 million I do know if you read uh, the diaries of uh, Ernest Hemingway Ernest Hemingway was an ambulance driver in World War One and also obviously the famous writer. Uh, he obviously spent time uh, uh, in the army towards the end of the, the war, the First World War. And one of the major things he was involved in was uh, the transportation and the burying of the dead uh, from that pandemic. And one of the things that he said about that was the thing was that it was the ages of the people affected. Uh, the Spanish pandemic affected the youth as opposed to the old. So again, um, we'll wait and see how these figures play out. And it's interesting that the French now are publishing these figures in their mainstream media. Anyway, um, according to uh, Eurostat, this is something not related to COVID 
And in some ways, it, it's an interesting figure, uh, as article that's come out. Now, according to Eurostat, the annual inflation in the European Union in March uh, stood at 1.7%, uh, which was up from 1.3% in February. And the Bloc Statistical Office said on Friday the figure for the same month last year was round about 1.2%. Anyway, uh, the euro area annual inflation rate was 1.3% in March, which was up 0.9% of the previous month and from 0.7% in March 2000. Now, services contributed to most to the annual uh, euro area inflation in March, uh, followed by energy, uh, food, alcohol and tobacco, so the price of your drink and your fags went up, and also non-energy industrial uh, goods. Anyway, compared with February, annual inflation fell in three EU member states and has remained stable in three and rose in 21 countries. Now, the countries with the lowest inflation rates were, believe it or not, Greece's, where it was minus 2%, uh, Portugal, Malta, Ireland and Slovenia all were at 0.1%. Anyway, on contrary, the highest um, annual rates of inflation were registered in Poland, where theirs had gone up to 4.4%, uh, Hungary's had gone up to 3.9%, Romania and Luxembourg had gone up to 2.5%, uh, according to the data that they published. But they haven't actually said the reason why uh, their inflation rates have gone up, what has caused their inflation rates to go up. Uh, but it's interesting to see that despite everything that's going on, the rate of inflation has not been going out of control it's actually in a controllable thing so that could mean that if we do get back to having a good season um we will still be looked at as a good place to come because in effect our prices will not have arisen uh, too much in relation to uh, what's been going on with the pandemic. So again, I look at that as a positive and we will see uh, where that will lead us as well. Anyway, a, a little bit of sad news that came in uh, yesterday was the story of an Hele a Hellenic army uh, from the Hellenic Army, uh, General Staff announced yesterday the death of a recently enlisted conscript on the island of Limnos on Saturday. According to a statement, the 23-year-old soldier was found unconscious in the company barracks uh, during a morning roll call. Uh, there were immediate attempts by the unit's doctor to try and revive him. Uh, but before he was rushed to the Limnos uh, General Hospital, uh, the Army General Staff expressed its condolences to the family of the soldier and stated that the cause of death was being investigated properly. I noticed the word properly. Anyway, uh, let's hope it wasn't a bullying case um, or barrack room bullies or something like that and that uh, they get to the bottom of that as well bless and also condolences to the family uh, that uh, that have uh, had a loss of their son anyway and finally a, a, a nice happy kind of story for and an interesting story as well for a sunday uh, morning um spanish airline liberia said it's going to let social media users choose an additional uh, destination uh, for its summer flights, OK? Now, the company said as COVID-19 pandemic continues uh, to shroud the air traffic forecasts and schedules and has put them into deep uncertainty, Iberia has so far announced it's going to travel to 112 summer destinations. And on Friday... It has invited uh, online users to pick another. All right. So they're going to ask you to pick another destination that uh, you may want to fly with Iberia, the Spanish airline. How, and guess who or guess what those locations are, because it's not like you can choose somewhere. Uh, they've given you a list to pick from anyway. And the list to pick from is as follows. There's three of them in Greece. Uh, one of them is Thessaloniki, which is a nice place to go. The other is Rhodes, which is also a nice island to go to. And the final one is, guess what? It's Zakynthos. And I've got to admit, in the article that I got this from, a mainstream Greek media article, they had pictures of Zakynthos. So I wonder if that's a hint. But anyway, uh, you can vote for Zakynthos if you wish for Iberia and Airlines to put flights on here for the summer. Um, but they've also given a couple of other locations, a few other locations included uh, Ljubljana in, Sol in Slovenia, 
is uh, also on their list of options that they you can choose on. Uh, Bastia in France, if you want to go to France, uh, you can choose to go there. Uh, Portugal's Azores is also uh, on that list of destinations. And also Fez in Morocco is also another destination that you can choose from. Now, if you want to vote for Zakynthos, just go on to the Iberian website and um, full details are there. <laughs> go and vote for Zakynthos. We need all we need all the help we can get. We need all the flights we can get. Uh, they haven't said where the flights are going to come from, whether they're coming from the UK to here or whether they're coming from Spain to here or they're coming from a mix of locations. Uh, but vote for Zakynthos. Let's get more uh, flights from Iberian Airlines here to Zakynthos. You never know. You might want to go from Zakynthos uh, to Spain, maybe, for a little visit uh, if we get the flights back and if moving about is easier. Right, let's have a quick look and see who's tuning in at the moment. Um, once again, a big shout out to Alf Ling. Lovely to see you. Uh, also, Steve uh, Hitting Clean up there in uh, Stoke on Trent. He was telling us about his trip to the Hungry Horse in Stoke, uh, going out and enjoying his first meal yesterday, uh, being cooked by someone else. And I'm not sure if he got a takeaway for breakfast this morning, uh, so he didn't have to bother cooking again. But anyway, nice to hear from you, Steve. Because uh, again, Steve should have been here this week, but obviously with everything going on, he wasn't able to get there uh also as well oh i've lost that take that down uh graham chisholm is tuning in as well uh lindsey lamb is watching as well andrew the fridge watkins uh steve says uh gallimera i hope you have a good day christine wildridge is looking in as well andy johnson is also looking in rob davis is looking alf ling says Sunny here in Suffolk, Ginge. I'm so pleased about that. Uh, Sherlock Holmes. Sher I love that Sherlock Holmes when that comes up. Ah, Moriarty. Uh, a quick wave to you, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Uh, Emma Marku in Essex is tuning in as well. Janet Clooney is also tuning in. Also, Amanda is tuning in. Thank you for your weather forecast. Uh, Steve Clayton says, I will subscribe now, Ginge. What good on you, sir. Oh, he's subscribing to my channel. I thought he was going to go over... Good for you, sir. Subscribe to my channel and also go and vote for Zakynthos with Iberian Airlines as well. That would be nice. Uh, Catherine Lean is also watching as well. John Mims is watching as well. Nice to see you. Uh, Dave Burns says, morning, GC. Thank you very much, Dave Burns. Don't forget the Worker's Journey, another broadcasting platform uh, that is broadcasting from Zakynthos. Go check Dave out. He does a great dance show on there. Uh, and he, like me, he likes to vary the music around a bit. So go and enjoy uh, Dave Burns. I'm not sure what time he's on in the afternoon but it'll come up on your announcements on your on your facebook uh, there's no problem with that anyway steve clayton says hugh edwards was first class yeah i like hugh edwards i was reading his article about all the work that he had to do to prepare himself for his broadcast and i'm pleased that it came off i, I didn't manage well we couldn't get the bbc uh, the, here the, there for some reason national corporation their feed was absolutely appalling to us here in greece they probably didn't want us to have it in the first place but sky they did a fantastic job yesterday uh dennis tyndall is also oh, denise tyndall is also tuning in as well uh, amanda gregory says uh, it was a very fitting send-off yes i agree 100 it was a very fitting send-off despite all the social distancing despite everything else that was going on even in the church choir wasn't allowed to be in there to sing they just had a few voices in there who sang and the sound and the music was absolutely awesome, all chosen by His Royal Highness Prince Philip. Uh, he'd actually meticulously planned his funeral, and I thought uh, it was a little personal touches in there that really brought home. But the sad thing was at the end of it was a queen on her own going home. And, and again, no party, no, not party, you know, drinks afterwards like you'd have at most funerals. Just going home on her own with a lady in waiting uh, to accompany her. It was it was kind of sad and poignant as well. Anyway, Alex, uh, Alan Parks at uh, Catrick is tuning in. Al remembers uh, getting ready for many a raw funeral in his day while at Queen's Colour Squadron uh, for some that didn't come off, OK? Which, uh, much to his relief, I would think, in some respects. Uh, Lyndon Erison is also tuning in from Wales. Barbara Telfy is watching as well. Uh, Karen Bush is watching too. Uh, 
William Healy is watching. Nice to have you tuning in. Phil Ellis as well, Rap Reg buddy, tuning in as well. Morning, Clifford. Morning, John. <laughs> Colin, he says, you could be Pathé News with those cockerel noises. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And here's the news today from Pathé News, coming to you all the way from Zakynthos in uh, Greece. And today, uh, morning, buddy. Hopes you're both well. I'm very sore after the opera. Ah, oh, it's Tim Crystal. Oh, Mr. Elvis. How you doing, fella? Lovely to hear him. He says, morning, buddy. Hope you're both well. I'm very sore after the operation, but feeling better every day. Well, good on you, fella. Get your strength back together. We need you back here, all right? Because... Uh, uh, Magdalena's needs its Elvis, all right? There you go. Anyway, Alan Woodhouse is watching as well. Nice to see you. Jill Jeff Steed is also watching. Uh, Bob Cave says, greeting from the holy island of Anglesey. Oh, down in Valley. <laughs> I could tell you some stories about Valley. There you go. Nice to see you uh, out and about there, um, the old buddy, old Bob Cave. Uh, Martin Puller Hazel is watching. Dave Cramp is tuning in as well. Nice to see you, Dave Norton. Heather Harvey Green is also tuning in up there in uh, up there in Sillaby. She says, uh, "Morning, jeans looking a bit grey, but not cold here." It's I've got to be honest. You're right about that. It's not cold. Not like the other day. We had sun and it was bright, but there was a chilly air to it. But no, you're right. It is not cold. And I'm looking now, and it's getting grimmer and grimmer, and it looks like, yeah, it looks like we might be having some rain. Anyway, Heather Nash is watching. Christine Brown is watching. Heather Nash says, morning to you and Jane from sunny Birmingham. <laughs> Birmingham's got all the sun. We want it back. Uh, Zanti Pete says, a very good morning, Ginge, and everyone from sunny, cloudless Milton Keynes. Oh, I love Milton Keynes as well. Uh, Teresa Stokes is watching. Christopher Lloyd James is watching. Belinda Shaw is watching. Uh, Julie White is watching. Susie Angus is watching. Nice to see you, Susie. Uh, Belinda Shaw says, joined late. Did you say Bastia in, uh, in France, uh, Corsica? Work there, regrets, uh, for, oh, so regards from uh, Mallorca, love to Lady Jane. Yeah, I think we said, yeah, Bastia. Yeah, we're, I'll, I'll, yeah, maybe, I think probably we said that. I can't remember, to be quite honest. But anyway, lovely to have you tuning in, Belinda, and uh, checking up on what's going on here in Zakynthos. Matt Williams is also watching. Uh, Julie White, she said, sir. Uh, Never forget his roots, uh, which was represented on the coffin of the Greek flag. Yes, I, you're, you're quite right. That's what struck me as well. As they were pulling, uh, taking the coffin uh, out from, um, um, from the palace and then moving it onto the back of the hearse, uh, you couldn't help but notice the Greek flag element in his standard, uh, which was draped on the coffin. And uh, it did make you sort of think as well, and especially here, being in Greece, it's like Greece was involved in the funeral as well, if you want to look at it like that as well. Uh, Catherine Ling says, Gallimera, DJ Ginge and uh, Jane, and Dean Edwards is also watching as well. Right, that's it. I'm going to bang it on the head there. Can I just say as well, thank you to all those people who tuned in uh, to my repeat broadcast of the Friday night's dance show. Um, the show was moved to a later time because otherwise it would have clashed with the funeral yesterday, which I'm really pleased that thought was given to that by beatsradio.co.uk uh, don't forget as well that tonight i do believe it's going out at its normal time five o'clock uk time till seven o'clock my northern soul show uh, is going out getting the old ice cream van back on the road or the soul cream van as i call it going from coast to coast bringing you the best in northern soul so Santi pete there's a few of your requests in there mate and uh, again, come and join me for that show. I will be in the chat room uh, of beatsradio.co.uk while the show is on. So if you want to pass any comments or you want to put any requests in for future shows, then come and join me in that location. And uh, I'd love to have you tuning in. And at the moment, uh, the, the listening figures at the moment with Beats Radio really are just going up and up and up and uh, some of the numbers were published yesterday uh, Sam Curtis is tuning in Sam was in there last night uh, the listening figures have really really just started to go up right now listen I'm gonna have to go uh, got some little jobs to do and also I've got to cook breakfast for Jane uh, today we had planned to do our normal constitutional exercise stroll uh, <laughs> as long as it doesn't rain I think we might still be on for that but anyway you have a good day 
I'll keep my uh, ear to the ground. Thank you for David Douglas. Got your live broadcast today. Cheers. Thank you, fella. Uh, Steve Hinkley says, weather, weather looks better here today in Stoke-on-Trent. I can well believe that at the moment, fella. But is it cold? That's the other question. Anyway, I'd better go. Um, thanks for that little message, Sam. I shall look forward to seeing that list. And uh, I will catch you later. Keep my ear to the ground and keep a lookout and see what's going on. Ta-ra.